Hello, welcome to this video introducing the concept of the alternating series test. This is the last in the list of 10 tests that we are supposed to be able to have a good grasp of in order to be able to tell whether a series converges or diverges. First off, what does it mean for a series to even alternate at all? What is that about? And so an alternating series is one that has a certain format to it where basically every other term is going to be uh, you're going to you're going to alternate signs for every term. OK, so if the eighth term is positive, then the ninth term is negative and so on. The way we write this is with um, with with a term that does the alternating for us. This this minus one that's to the n minus one will alternate based on whether the exponent on minus one is even or odd. And you have to watch where you start at, you know, how you want it to, you know, go back and forth between plus or minus. Do you want to start with the plus or you want to start with the minus? And so the a sub n is how we always write our series, but now we're going to write them, the alternating ones at least, broken apart where we have the part that does the alternating of the signs and then the part without that. Think of the b sub n part as like the absolute value. It's, it's the positive terms. It doesn't consider the sign. And then um, those b sub n, the b sub n terms, they end up being important to help us figure out whether the series converges or diverges using the alternating series test. That's coming on the next slide. But um, it doesn't have to look exactly like this negative 1 raised to the n minus 1. It could be negative 1 raised to the n. The point, though, is that the b sub n part is the absolute value of the a sub n. It disregards signs and just takes the, the part without the sign. So an alternating series is one that has successive terms that are, have opposite signs. Here are two examples. Alternating in the numerator, denominator is n squared. This starts at 1. So when you plug a 1 in, the exponent on negative 1 is a 0. And so you get a 1 over 1. But when you plug a 2 in, the exponent on negative 1 is a 1. So you get negative 1 fourth, positive 1 ninth, negative 1 6, positive 1 25th, forever. This pattern will continue. This is an alternating series. Okay. Next example. Alternating sign, a little different. Maybe instead of minus 1 to the n, minus 1 is just minus 1 to the n. That's fine. And then there's the rest of it. The n squared on top of n plus 5. You plug a 1 in, you get a 6. But wait, it's a negative one sixth. You plug a two in, you get four over seven, but it's a positive. I'm gonna go back and forth in this manner where your numerator is growing by one while your denominators are the squares. This is also an alternating series. Okay, in each of these, they have this b sub n part, is, which is the part without the alternating in the first example there, 1 over n squared is the b sub n. In the second one, n squared over n plus 5 is the b sub n. Okay, and these aren't the only two ways that we can have the sign go back and forth between plus or minus 1. So there are some alternative ways for that to happen. The two that we have, but uh, why can't you put n plus 1 as the exponent? It should do the same thing as n minus 1 as the exponent. And then that gets a little strange after that, though, because, you know, cosine of a multiple of pi actually does the same alternating that these guys do. It's just a fancy way to say minus 1 to the n, I think. When n is 1, you have cosine pi, who's negative 1. When n is 2, you have cosine 2 pi, who is 1. So you go from negative 1 to 1 and back and forth where the odd guys give you negative while the even guys give you positive one. And so it's, it's the same way of saying negative one to the n. If you get confused by cosine of n pi, just replace it with negative one to the n. Okay. And then finally, I guess if you can do it with cosine, you should be able to do it with sine, but it's a little more tricky. What you need are odd multiples of pi over two. So you have pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, seven pi over two. Those are the guys that go from 1 to minus 1. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that. These are the alternative ways to be able to recognize that you have an alternating series 
And when you do have an alternating series, you'd like to be able to try the alternating series test. Let's tell you about, talk about what it is. So same setup, focus on the part without the alternating. If you could show two things about that B sub n, the set of B sub n terms, if you could show two things about that, then you can make a conclusion about your series. First thing you need to show is that this B sub n officially forms a sequence if the limit as n goes to infinity on that B sub n is equal to zero. You're halfway there. And then the second part that you have to show is that this B sub n represents a series that, a uh, sequence, sorry, that is decreasing, meaning that each one is smaller than the previous one. Now, there'll be two ways to officially show that. The, um, the standard way is to show that when you replace n with n plus 1, you get something that's smaller than the original B sub n, okay, to, to be able to show that inequality to be true. No matter what n is, that should be true. The next term is smaller than the previous term, okay? Well, if you have trouble with that, being able to, you know, for sure say that, there's an alternative, though, a little more heavy-handed. It requires calculus. But you can replace the ends with x's and create your function f of x, kind of like what you do for the integral test, and then show that this is a decreasing function. You know what this does. This, this basically completes the, um, see, what we're having is just a bunch of numbers added up. So by putting f of x, it fits a curve that goes exactly through all the points. And if that curve is decreasing, then for sure the sequence that is underneath there is also decreasing. And so... Um, yeah, if you can show that the function is less than zero, it has a derivative that's less than zero, eh, okay, it might be a little bit of trouble, but if you show these two things, then that's enough to say the following. If your alternating series has a B sub n term that satisfies these two properties, we can say that the series is convergent. There's nothing to say that the series is divergent with this particular test. Okay, if these parts don't work, if you can't show these two parts, that doesn't mean that it diverges, okay? And so this test is for convergence only. It says nothing about divergence, all right? And then like the integral test, if you don't have it decreasing right away, the function, as long as it decreases eventually for all n greater than 9 or 8 or 3, you know, as long as it decreases for all integers after a certain one, then that's enough. And so um, this is the alternating series test. I like to think of it like the test for divergence. These are the only two tests that give you one result only, right? Test for divergence gives you divergence. If you can show that the limit isn't zero. Alternating series test, if you can show these two things are true, it gives you convergence. There's no such thing as the test, the, the series is divergent by the alternating series test. That's just as unfounded as saying the test is converging by the test for divergence. It doesn't make sense. And so that's why I like to um, categorize these two. And so that's the alternating series test. In subsequent videos, you'll see lots of examples. And then, and then we'll also introduce the idea of absolute convergence versus conditional convergence. All right, that's the end of this video. Thank you very much. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this journey of calculus too. And um, if you have any questions, don't be afraid. Comment down below or reach out to me. And I will, um, yeah, like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.